Mike, if you mind sharing what the plan is for Wednesday in terms of rotations, who's going to play, who's not going to play, if you have that plan at all? Yeah, I mean, everybody's going to play. Um, not sure how much, you know, like our starters may just play the first half. You know, we'll figure it out when we get a little closer. We get, still got another practice tomorrow. But we want to make sure, because hey, everybody's busting their behind, and um, we want to make sure everybody gets a chance to be on the floor, especially for a home game here in front of our fans. How much do they want to play against another opponent other than themselves, do you feel like, right now? You know, it's interesting. Uh, our group has been pretty competitive amongst each other, you know, so far. And uh, so I know they want to face another jersey there, get excited about that, especially seeing games on TV. But uh, it's still been pretty lively and gets a little chippy every once in a while, you know. But the, the, the competitive nature or competitive spirit is still there, and that's what you like to see. So as long as that happens, you know, we, we can have a few more practices. From a day-to-day -day standpoint, does this week, when you mix in preseason tests, does this week start to look a little different than the previous? Uh, it, it does, um, you know, because obviously last week we had, I, mean, I think, two two-a-days, I think it was last week. I think this is the second week we're in. So, you know, we're not having any more two-a-days. Um, and uh, that, that's the biggest thing. And then, you know, you've got to, also be prepared to have a couple of shoot arounds. We haven't had any shoot around type practices yet. So there's some, some different things that start to resonate or make you start to realize that the season is fast approaching. Yeah, this is your first opportunity in these preseason games to kind of test what you've been working on just like from a logistical standpoint. How if think some certain things don't work, how often do you stick with certain things versus scrap certain things or adjust certain things? Do you make those kind of decisions in this preseason or just ride out with what you got through about it? No, you make the you make adjustments, but it's throughout the course of the year. Like, it, you don't want to uh, give up on anything too early because the guys are still feeling their way through what we're trying to teach them. And so some of it may look bad because we're not necessarily running hard enough or we're thinking a little too much. It's like, should I go this way or that way? Oh, shoot, I should go this way. And that's too late. And it messes with the flow of the offense. And same defensively. Do I, am, I, am I in the best shift position? Should I shift a little more? OK, my guy's already cut back door. And now that starts a domino effect. So you know, you, you have to have some patience with, um, uh, with the group and, and, and individuals as the preseason group goes along. And that's, you know, that's what I'm saying. You know, that's what my whole thing about climbing together. You know, you're, going, you're doing it together. Some guys can climb a little faster than others, but you got to remember we're all roped in together. We're a team, so we can't take off and leave the group. We can stay together. And then there are going to be times when we take a couple of steps backwards. And if we take too many steps backwards, then it's time to sit back and reevaluate, OK, why aren't we getting this done? Do we need to change the technique here? Scrap it all together. I don't know, but it's it's a little bit of a process. If like I remember, we have with injuries and like how close are some of these guys getting getting back, and how much has that impacted your your training camp not having all those guys around? Uh, you know, the first thing is you know that's part of the reason why you have 21. So we've had more than enough bodies to uh, do it, what we needed to do. It stinks from the standpoint that you know a guy like Trey is missing reps, uh, a guy like O. Who's playing really well is missing reps. And same with J Mac and Kev. You know, those guys are missing reps. And so they're going to be a little bit behind. They can sit and watch all they want. They can even get to a point where they're allowed to go through non contact stuff, uh, wearing a red jersey and all that other stuff. But there's nothing that can, stim that can simulate um, uh, live activity and trying to do whatever you're taught in a drill live. And, and you know, you take it a step further. Now you're doing it on Wednesday. You're doing it live. Plus, you're doing it against another team with, with fans in the stands. And so, uh, <clears throat> it's it's hard from that standpoint. But uh, you know, everybody's progress progressing well uh, from the injury standpoint. Mike. Any change with uh, Herder? Has he has he gone to one on one, two on two, three on three? Any of that? No. Yeah. With he, just, he just he's doing non contact stuff right. With having to eventually cut that 21 down to 18, what are you kind of just looking for when you have to eventually make those decisions, and how important are those final spots? You know, I mean, there, there's a lot. You know, you look for fit and what do we need, and you know, can this player grow? 
you know, whatever. And, and so, you know, if, if you, you're trying to get real, if you're trying to get down to the nitty gritty, you know, you want guys that do the small things. Um, you know, we're a team that likes the offensive rebound, so if somebody's in that crash position, are they going to give the effort to crash every time and get a hand on the ball? You know, that is a unique skill set um, that not many guys can do. Every single, a lot of guys can do it 50% of the times. Most guys can do it 75% of the time. Not many people can crash 100% of the time, putting that pressure on the on the, the defense and, and, and trying to get your hand on the ball. So that's a skill set that we're looking for. We're looking for guys that every possession, again, everybody says they want to run, but it's hard to run for 48 minutes. Trust me. And, and play defense the way we want to play defense. So we're looking for guys that, that, that will run the floor extremely hard every single possession to put pressure on the defense and to open up that floor for a guy like Fox, who's the fastest in the league. You know, we're looking for guys that are going to hit somebody on the defense end of the floor, but do it without sending them to the free throw line. So having that physicality, having that presence, being, communi uh, uh, being able to communicate all the time at a high level. So those small things are the details that we're, are some of the details that we're talking about, trying to excel in and focus on right now with our guys because we, if we need a bucket, we got guys that can go get a bucket now, and we can be ready to catch and shoot. Um, you know, off of those guys, we don't need anybody to go out there and do too much. Or off with the movement we have uh, in our offense, with the passing, that with the willing passers we have. Uh, with our offense, all that stuff's going, in my opinion, in time, uh, be great. But those little details that are hard to do on every single possession to alleviate some of the pressures off of Tomas and Fox and Lamar, those things are what we're looking for in guys that can help make them special, which at the end of the day may make us special. Sounds like you've been seeing some of that. Uh, we have. I, you know, we, we, we charted uh, – crashes in, uh, in the scrimmage that we had on Saturday. And, you know, you look at a guy like Isaac Jones, um, I think he was, first of all, he was like four for five from the three. Or, but, but they were all catch and shoot shots where he got to his spot, the floor was spaced, the ball got kicked to him or sprayed to him, and he took the right shot in rhythm. That was great, but more importantly, I think he had 11 opportunities to crash and he crashed all 11 times and came up with some big rebounds. One time he crashed, got the rebound, sprayed it, relocated, had his feet set in the corner, the ball found him again, and he knocked down a three all in one possession. So when you have uh, players that are gonna bring something special like that to the table, for me and the rest of the staff, that's eye-opening. And uh, so we've had some guys do some things uh, in our practices to just make you go, hmm, okay, maybe, you know, maybe. So you got to keep making me say maybe before I can say yes. <laughs> With I that, say maybe a lot. <laughs> With that offensive rebound you've been emphasizing, obviously grabbing the board itself has its value, but yeah. what value do you see in just going in there and kind of being able to tip the ball around? It gives us a chance. Not only that, it slows their breakdown. So if you go and get your hand on it, now they're everybody on their team is probably coming back to try to come up with it, and now they're not getting out in transition. And who knows what can happen if you get your hand on it. We come up with it, it can, you can hit it, and it can go off somebody's leg, and now it's our ball out of bounds. There are a lot of good things. And then on top of that, I, I tell our guys, it's just like running. If you go, if you do something every single time, you know, it's like, think back when you go play pick up and there's always that one dude in the gym that's just right up in your face the whole time. <laughs> and, you know, for sure, you want to just be like, oh, me, you know? You want to just, and, and or you're just going to be like, you know what, I, I don't even have time for this. It ain't that serious. And so you're going to kind of quit without really quitting. So, you know, you can take somebody's heart or you can impose your will on somebody just by being consistent, doing it every single time. And crashing is one of them, just like running the floor. I'm telling you, if you run and get to the corners, that floor is going to just do like that. But when, you, when the floor does that because you've got to be guarded, you've got a guy like Fox coming down, and who's going to stop him in transition after a make or miss if we're in our spots and he's got all that space to be able to attack. So you do it every single time or get used to doing it every single time, which is hard again. I'm not saying it's easy. And 
pretty soon you're going to be imposing your will on people and they're going to quit just because you're imposing your will to do the small things. Mike, if I remember correctly, I think the bell over there was rung after drawing charges. Is there anything specific that you guys are doing for crashing the offensive glass or anything like that to, to encourage that? Well, so, so to today when we play, we gave uh, plus two points to uh, a team that uh, got an offensive rebound. So if, if, if I'm on defense, that meant I'm going to keep you, I'm going to box you out because I'm not going to let you get the offense rebound because then we lose two points on the board. Mm -hmm. I think our black team won a drill because they had, within that drill, they had like five offensive rebounds. I don't think they made a bucket, but they, they, they got five <laughs> offensive rebounds and, and we want to we want to show our guys that, hey, if you win the possession game, you're going to give yourself a chance to win while getting stops. Now, you can't think you're going to get 20 offensive rebounds and no stops and think you're going to win. But if you get stops like you're capable of and you offense a rebound, you come up with the loose balls, you come up with all those types of things, you're going to give yourself, you know, make free throws, get to the free throw line, limit them from getting there, you're going to give yourself a chance to win. And that was proven today with the black team in this particular drill. Not even, I don't even think they made a bucket, but winning the drill because they came up with four or five offensive rebounds throughout the course of the drill. Is Luke having to guys, hold at least one guy back to make sure they, the, all five crash, or is, is Luke allowing all five to crash? No, so it's a, we have crash zones. And we have our crash zone out on the floor. We talked about that. I'm not going to talk about it on camera. <laughs> but we talked about that. I don't know if you were, you were here, yeah, of where the crash zone is. And if you're in that area, you you got to go. you got to go, and we'll figure out the transition afterwards because we actually think it helps us in transition defense. Michael, cool. thanks, thanks, guys. guys. Appreciate it. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate thanks, Mike. Appreciate it. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate it. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate it. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate it